Well, here I am in Dublin, capital of the Republic of Ireland today. Although in the mid 19th century, it was just another city in the British Empire. And it's here, round about 1830, that we think Francis Tumblety, future Jack the Ripper suspect, and somebody involved in the Abraham Lincoln assassination conspiracy was born. Now he stayed here up until around the age of 17, at which point he emigrated from Ireland like so many did, like so many of my ancestors. And uh, around about the age of 16 or 17, he emigrated to the United States and went to live in Rochester, New York. And that's where he grew up. So to all intents and purposes, he grew up as an American, although his youth, his earliest teen years, would have been spent here in Dublin. And that's what makes him not only the American, but also the Irish suspect in the Jack the Ripper case. So behind me here is O'Connell Street, which in Tumblety's time would have actually been called Sackville Street. And this is the city, as I said, that he spent his formative years and it left its stamp on him because when he went over to Canada and to the United States he never forgot his Irish identity and as my book shows he worked the Irish communities in both Canada in British North America as it then was and also in the United States to further his own business to further his political career on a couple of occasions when he dabbled with politics but also to protect himself because time and again he was arrested for gross indecency and also for dodgy business practices. And he relied on Irish networks to get him out of trouble. And they came to his rescue. This is the post office in Dublin behind me, a famous landmark. Now, Tumblety never lost sense of his Irish identity. It was something that he retained throughout his life. And there's no doubt that he encountered anti-Irish, anti-Roman Catholic discrimination. Although the main cause of official interest in Tumblety was his sexuality. But all of this, I suspect, fueled a burning anger within him. Now, it's no excuse for what he did. Uh, and I suspect he was already a psychopath regardless. But nonetheless, none of these things particularly helped. Now, this is Trinity College, Dublin, where Tumblety made the rather implausible uh, claim that he had medical qualifications from this top university in Ireland. In the 1990s, the college actually looked for any evidence of a Francis Tumblety studying medicine here between the 1850s and 1890s. Needless to say, no evidence is forthcoming. So I think we can assume that Tumblety, on this occasion, made it all up. Why might Tumblety have claimed to have a medical qualification from this college behind me when it was quite obviously not true? Well, the thing is that people like him who were selling over-the-counter uh, patent medicine, herbal cures, were held in utter contempt by the mainstream medical establishment. So Tumblety reacted to that by inventing testimonials, qualifications and so on. He wasn't the only person doing that, by the way, but he needed to do it in order to protect his business. When Tumblety was selling herbal cures, the attitude among mainstream physicians was that real doctors cut people open and cut things off them, uh, conducted amputations, removed things and so on. Tumblety did none of these things. He just sold herbal cures. Now, maybe it was a hang-up about that, about the fact that he wasn't a surgeon and he knew that that was a problem that he conducted in an insane manner acts of impromptu surgery on the streets of Whitechapel in 1888. If you want to find out more about Francis Tumblety and his involvement in two of the greatest crimes of the 19th century, then buy the book, because I assure you it is a true crime roller coaster ride.